Marshall. So we were, and our commander is here, our organist and choir director and song leader. That's a lot of hats you wear, plus working on the Sunday school program this morning, but you, you do it all well, so thank you. So anyway, we have a um, prelude called Jesus Saves. Thank you, Jonas. That was beautiful. Rita Bouchard is here as our worship leader today. You know, she was away for five weeks with a bug. It just wouldn't leave. And so I figured if she's coming back, she might as well work. <laughs> right. So here she is with a call to worship. Have you ever had a time when your life, your routine or your relationships seem to be growing old and lifeless? And the people? Can you hear Christ calling you to find a new purpose in your life by listening for the needs of others? We are not here all by ourselves. We are not just individuals who are part of an audience. We are the people of God. We are the body of Christ. Let us worship the Lord our God.
or accompany us. And you all sang well, so give yourselves a hand too. But sit down, it's time to sit now. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, it is an absolute gorgeous day out today. If we could have planned it, we would have done worse than this. It is sunny out, the sun is shining, the sky is clear, and everything is alive and growing out there. And the temperature is just absolutely perfect. Dear Lord, we love days like this. And as we think about days like this, they seem just so special and perfect and, and our hearts are at peace. If only the world could have weather like this always. But we see the storm fronts coming up with grouchy and angry people. We hear of war, we hear of people who are hungry. We hear of people who just love to argue about politics. We hear people who are just plain contrary. And Lord, it makes us feel sometimes not like we're in a great and peaceful day like today. But we know we are because whenever our hearts rest in you, they rest at peace and contentment. Whenever we can trust you and believe that you have promises for each of us, promises for new promise and new hope, we can be happy. And whenever we see all the blessings you've given us, we can feel so content. Today, we thank you for the blessings of our children who gave such a wonderful performance, reminding us of our faith, reminding us of stories from the Bible that speak so clearly about your caring and also they're singing uh, together songs for us and the instrumentalists as well. Dear Lord, we thank you for the blessings of our church, for such people who care about each other and all the good that they are able to do. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And this is the first part of our prayer list for Sunday, uh, for Sunday, June 5th. Let us pray for Karen Anstein, Angela Cox, Regine Crone, Jim Ursham, Steve Forbes, Sterling Fritz, Linda Glass, Leanne Hill, Chip Hoover, Richard Luckenbaugh, Paul McElwee, Dorothy Nagash, Kaylee Noble, Dean Rawball, Nora Lee Sandrick, Reverend Charles Strasball, Reverend Dr. David Stewart, Beverly Trump, Reverend Leonard Warner. And for the friends and family of Joanne Green, James Miller, Nora Lee Sandrick, Reverend Bill Shiller, and Suzette Stairlard. And on the prayer list, uh, Karen Anstein is due to come home from the hospital tomorrow. So that's really good news. And her brother, Dwayne Henry, happened to be at Apple Hill with her in rehab at a different part. Uh, him with uh, lung surgery, hers with her broken ankle. So it's good that people are making progress out there. Let us share together the prayer our Lord taught us as we say, our <laughs> Father who art in heaven, hallowed Hello, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And our call to offering. Your offerings can be mailed to Cindy Forbes at 5123 Sunshine School Road, Spring Grove, PA. Sunday school offerings can be sent to Neil Warball at 800 Mengitz Mills Road, Spring Grove, PA 17362. And there's uh, church envelopes and offering plates for both Sunday school and the church are in the back of the sanctuary.
gracious Lord, how blessed we are to be gathered together today with family and friends when we might worship you, when we might thank you for all the gifts you've given us. And sometimes we're so busy working and keeping busy that we don't see the blessings that are there. But you give us so many and how grateful we are that we are able to share from our treasures to do your work in this world of caring for others, sharing faith, encouraging each other in the promises you give us. Bless these gifts we return to you in Jesus' name, amen. smooth. Anyway, um, our children will now come forward for this morning's children's story. Oh, we have a good group here today. Let's, let's see who's here. What's your name, sir? Austin. Nice to have you here, Austin. Good job playing the piano, by the way. And who's this? Maggie. Good job on the violin. Yes, and let's see who's over here. Elijah. Elijah, thank you. You read very well and sang well today too. And ben. Ben's read very well too. That was really good. So today I would like you to tell you a story about Rachel, okay? Rachel, what's gonna happen now? I know Maggie. Anyway, Rachel was going to go to see her friend, Amy, next. She lived next door. 
And, but first Rachel was thinking how much she loved to draw. Do any of you love to draw? Raise your hand if you love to draw. Yeah, you too. Yeah, okay. You don't love to draw? No, you don't have, to. well, she can love to draw. You don't have to love it, yeah. So anyway, um, she felt it was just such a blessing that God gave her this because she just loved to do it so much. And so she went over to Rachel's house and she could hear screaming when she got close to the house and she knocked on the door and there was Rachel's mother and she could hear Rachel screaming in the background. And she and and uh, Rachel said to to uh, her friend, not not Rachel screaming, Amy screaming in the background. Yes, I'll get it right. Yeah. Anyway, Amy screaming in the background. She said, do you want to come in over to draw? No, I don't want to draw. And then she started screaming again and crying. And well, said Rachel, if you feel better, come over and draw. She figured she could take it personal, you know, like maybe Rachel, Amy was angry with her because she was so upset, but she figured she was just so upset. Do you ever have friends like that, that sometimes they're just really angry or they're grumpy or they're, they're mad and it doesn't seem to make any sense to you? You get that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, even when you're older, you're going to find that sometimes adults are grouchy or they're angry or they're upset and you don't know why. Sometimes you can ask them, you okay? How you doing? What's going on? Sometimes they'll tell you, sometimes they won't. But anyway, so Rachel figured she'd go home. And you know what? Soon there was a knock at the door and there was Amy and she said, I'm sorry, I was grumpy. Can I come in? Yeah, come on in, said Rachel. Come in and let's let's draw together. And they did, and they had a great time. So, you know, today is Pentecost, and today we, we celebrate the fact that God put Christ's spirit in our hearts, you know, his love, his understanding, his caring, so that when we run into friends that are just in a bad mood, we don't really have to take it personal. You know, it's not about us. It's not that we're so terrible or that we've changed. It's they're just in a bad mood. And you'll have this. Can you remember that? Thank you so much. It's really nice to have you here. Appreciate it. Our first scripture today is from Proverbs 19, verse 17. When you give to the poor, it is like lending to the Lord, and the Lord will pay you back. Our second scripture from John chapter 14, 15 through 20, the promise of the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him, but you know him because he remains with you and is in you. When I go, you will not be left all alone. I will come back to you. In a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will also live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my father and you are in me, just as I am in you. And from Acts chapter 2, 1 through 21, the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly, there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because all of them heard the believers talking in their own languages. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, these people who are talking like this are Galileans. 
how is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our own native tongues? We are from Parthia, Media, Alam, from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, from Pontus in Asia, from Philgia, Pamphylia, from Egypt in the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome. Both Jews and Gentiles converted to Judaism. And some of us are from Crete in Arabia. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? Alicia was feeling sad. It was a Sunday night. And on Sunday night, she and her friends, Tiffany and Jordan, would all get together. It was a great time. They would go to youth group first at church, and then they would come home and their friends were, were best friends. And they would have this great supper together with a lot of great food, a lot of talking, a lot of teasing one another, and just a lot of fun. And then the girls would go off by themselves and conspire for what was going to be happening in high school the rest of the week. But unfortunately, Alicia's friends had had the nerve to move away to another state. Their family just took up and left. And she was so sad because her friends meant the world to her. She had been with these friends since she was just a little girl. And now they were gone. Now, now they promised they'd keep in touch. You know, nowadays they can email and text and go on FaceTime and do a video conference, but it just wasn't being the same as being there. Besides which, their lives were heading in different directions. They were meeting new friends out there and, and here Alicia was too. And they were talking about events that they couldn't attend because they were so far apart and people they couldn't see any longer. It was really sad. Her father, John Peterson, was having his issues. It, he missed the, the, the parents of Jordan and Tiffany for sure, but what was bothering him was his job. I mean, it was a great job. He'd started it 10 years ago and he made good money. He had interesting things to do. Even the, when he started out, even the annoying tasks seemed to him as kind of interesting and exciting. But now, after 10 years, he was just kind of same old, same old all every, every week. Even the problems were the same old problems, which made them easier to solve. But still, it, he was wondering if he needed something new. Maybe he needed a new job. Maybe he needed to make more money. He wasn't sure quite what, what it was. His sister, Emily, was also feeling her life was getting old. She and her husband, Josh, used to go to supper on Saturday night. Hold on, just working on this microphone. There we go. They used to go to supper on Saturday night. There we go. I was just wrestling the microphone for those of you at home. Anyway, they would go to supper on Saturday night and they always had such a wonderful meal. And when they first were married, they would talk about their childhood experiences and their crazy families and the politics of trying to figure out what, what was going on in their families now. And they would just laugh and have such a good time. But now that they'd been married a number of years, they found that they didn't have as much to say at supper. They looked around and would notice these old couples, you know, people 40, 50 years old, really old people. And, uh, and they would notice how sometimes they would just sit there and they wouldn't say a word to each other. They would just eat. It was like they were in some kind of deep meditation while they ate their meal, but they didn't seem to be having much fun. And she wondered what was happening to she and Josh. She, she wondered about that. Well, as you know, this is Pentecost and it's a time for new beginnings, a time when we celebrate how the spirit of Christ came to the disciples. And you remember the story of Pentecost. It happened after the disciples of Jesus had really been on a roller coaster of emotions. First, 
They had been with Jesus during his earthly ministry. And that was exciting. I mean, feeding thousands of people, healing people who were sick, uh, empowering people who were sinners to, to be transformed, raising the dead, little things like that. And every day it was different. And not only was Jesus the big deal, but just because they were his disciples, they were somebody else as well. And Jesus got nailed to a cross by the authorities and their whole world fell apart and they were in the depths of despair. And then Easter came and God raised Jesus to life again. And, and suddenly they couldn't believe their eyes at all that was happening. And then the, the appearances of Jesus became less and less until his ascension into heaven. And then what next? They were together, but they were without a leader. And then they remembered Jesus told them, I'm going to send you the helper, the Holy Spirit, who's going to empower you and lead you. And sure enough, on Pentecost Day, they're gathered together in an upper room. And there's this sound like the rushing of the wind and these tongues of fire that seem to be touching the disciples. And suddenly they feel called and empowered to go out into the streets of Jerusalem and tell the story of how God had raised Jesus from the dead. And it was just this amazing moment when thousands of people joined the church. I like this passage, though, that sort of concludes the end of Acts chapter 2 with these words. Everyone was amazed by the many miracles and wonders the disciples worked. And the Lord's followers often met together and they shared everything they had. They would sell their property and possessions and give the money to whoever needed it. Day after day, they met together in the temple. They broke bread together in different homes and shared their food happily and freely while praising God. Everyone liked them. And each day, the Lord added to their group others who were being saved. Isn't that amazing? Such a wonderful story of this group moving out into the world. Now, each of our friends, Alicia and Sean, her father, John, and his sister, Emily, read this passage, but they all had a different take on it. Alicia, as she read it, she realized that there was something amazing happening to those disciples, that every day, God was adding new people to their number. But more than that, they weren't looking back at the past. She was stuck at the past. She was mourning the fact that her friends, Tiffany and Jordan had moved away. And, and so she was just kind of stuck feeling empty and alone, but they were different. They were thinking of God had something in store for them each day. And it was exciting every day. And so she thought to herself, maybe if God's spirit touched the disciples on Pentecost, God's spirit would be in her life too. And maybe help her to look forward to something. So she decided to look forward with expectation. And sure enough, about three days later, some of the girls she knew at school came to her and said, hey, what are you hearing from Jordan and Tiffany? I hear you're in contact with them. And she said, well, yeah. And she told them what the news was in their life. And then they were saying, oh, we really miss them. Oh, well, I miss them too, she said. And as they got talking and sharing stories about their experience with Jordan and Tiffany, it was really neat because then uh, Alicia said, why don't we hang out together? You know, we used to be friends with them. We can be friends together. And they did. And after a few months of that, uh, Alicia got brave and said, why don't you come to youth group with me? Our youth group isn't just one of people getting together and playing board games. I and mean, we go out and do things like help people who are in need and put new roofs on houses and uh, handicapped entrances and all that. That sounds like a great idea, they said. And suddenly Alicia realized that God was alive in her life and gave her a whole new future that she didn't expect. I mean, here she was 17 years old and thinking her life had almost come to an end. And her parents kept saying, you got a whole life ahead of you. And it was true, it was wonderful. Now, her father, John, had a different experience. As he read that passage, he realized something interesting about the disciples, that they were all about helping other people. 
I mean, they even sold all their possessions and they gave the money to the poor, whoever needed it. They shared their food together and they realized, John realized that these people really cared about others. He, on the other hand, his life was pretty much about himself, his job, his troubles, his worries, his annoyances. And he realized that maybe he needed to change that. So we prayed about it and God whispered in his ear, listen to people. You know, when they say, you say to somebody, how you doing? John discovered that if he said, how you doing? And they said, I'm all right. And he said, no, you don't, you don't look quite you're, like you're okay today. T tell me about what's really happening. I'm here to listen. They would talk because you know, almost nobody listens to anybody. But John found that if you ask people what's happening, they're glad to tell you. And he found out that if you just prime the pump a little, you know, you say, so you're saying you're a little sad. Well, well tell me more about that. Uh, you know, feedback, what they're telling you and, and ask questions, they would do that. And he found out his life suddenly became very interesting because, you know, you, you watch sometimes a, a really interesting movie on TV or a television show where there's really interesting characters. Well, he found out that he had all these characters in his life all around him if he just listened and they told about what was happening. And John was so glad to listen. And you know what? People just loved him because he did listen to them and he, and he cared. His daughter, Emily, read the passage and she got something else out of it. She was having supper with her husband, Josh, on that Saturday evening time at the restaurant. And as they were talking, she said, you know, I, I was talking to my friend, Amy. And, you know, my friend, Amy, is a single mom. And, well, you know, she's saying that, that her daughter really doesn't get to many activities at school because they happen in the afternoon or the evening. And I said, well, you know, Katie, our daughter goes to these things and we bring her, we'll just bring your daughter along with us. She said, you'd really do that? Well, sure, sure. I mean, it's no trouble at all. And, and your daughter and, and Katie are our best friends. So it's going to work out. Well, Josh said, that's a great idea. You know, that's something we should do. And when they went to church that Sunday, they saw Amy and some other friends at Bible study, and they started talking about, you know, maybe there's more than one single mom that needs help. And they got together some single moms and some other people who were retired and had some time on their hands. And well, they figured out a way how they could have a group where they'd help each other out. And it really worked because they realized that the disciples of Jesus had such an exciting life because they had a purpose. They had a purpose of reaching out and caring and sharing the spirit of Christ with others. And they could do the same. So Pentecost happened a long time ago, that first one with the disciples of Jesus, a couple thousand years. But it happens even now. It happens wherever you let the spirit of God be in your life. It happens whenever you realize your whole life is ahead of you in the future. And even whether we're 17 or 77, God has something special for us each day. And as we realize that our life is not just about ourselves, but caring about the lives of others and having a purpose to be of help and to be of service, we discover that the spirit of God is with us. Aren't we blessed? Amen. As we continue with our prayer list, let us take a deep breath and know that the spirit of Pentecost can come with, we say each of their, these people's names and we hope that the spirit of healing reaches them. We pray for Reverend Phyllis Baum, Bob Bixler, Joe Black, Chris Elliott, Jan Fry, Paul Huge Jr., Jane Miller, Jane Nace, Narada Ramirez, Greg and Sandra Pudaba, Steve Selling, Jean Sterner, Mike Sterner, Amos Strasbaugh II, Jim Wardrop, Phyllis Warner, Shirley Zumbrum. 
We pray also for Violet Bortner, Joan Groscott, Julian Grody, Tony Heiss, Laurie Miller, Shirley Miller, Mary Lou and Donald Meckley, Paige Creel and family, Gary Rawball, Shirley Russell, and Jackie Toman. We pray for Gail Ambrosius, Cindy Breeden, Gabe Catherman, Dolores Markle, Willis Miller, Kyle Shank, Betty Trump, Cecilia Williams, Cheryl Zumbrum, and those we keep in our continued prayers, Robert Einstein, William Dell, James Diem, Dennis Fawzi, Todd Gladfelter, Lester Hackler, Sidney Helmers, Joan Hensel, Dr. Mark Hirsch, Dolores Jones, Warren Lockman, Ray Leppert, Justin Miller, Lisa Myers, Bob Ostott, Pat Palmer, George Rankin Sr., Mike Schmidt, Beverly Spat Mohammed, Kathy Warball, Eric Sherman, Laura Schilt, Sharon Schuler, Summer Storm, Matt Strevig, Virginia Souter, Sherry and Canyon Taylor, Richard Brett Wilkinson, Kim Wilson, and Julia Woodby.
Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Praise, Spirit, praise. Set our hearts on fire. Forever flow. Flood the nations. Grace and mercy. benediction. The Lord who made this amazing universe is creating you anew each day. Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, offers you peace that never dies. The Holy Spirit is setting your hearts on fire right here, right now. Go in peace and be transformed. You may change the world. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Each one can read. We all can lead one, we can lead one to the Savior, then together we can tell the world that Jesus is the way, if we each one reach one. You may be seated. We have a few announcements. The flowers are given to the glory of God and to the honor of, little drum roll here, the 60th wedding anniversary of Ken and Dolores Markle, which was on June 10th by their families. Congratulations. And you know, when they come to church, you never see them scrapping or anything. They just seem to like each other. Congratulations, that's great. Birthdays for this coming week, Kayla B. Henry, Jacqueline Ambrosius, Carlos Snyder, Sandra L. Albright, and Ashton R. Smith. And as you heard, our dear friend, Jim Miller passed away this week. His viewing is going to be at the Beck Funeral Home tomorrow night, Monday, from 5.30 to 8 p.m. That's at Beck Funeral Home in Spring Grove. And then Tuesday, uh, the viewing is going to be here from one to two in the afternoon. That's Tuesday, June 7th with a funeral from two to three and a reception thereafter. And uh, next Sunday, June the 12th, the Sunday school, the uh, Vacation Bible School are going to have their ending program at nine o'clock. So I know you're going to want to come and see that. The kids are amazing and they will have been singing all these great songs all through the week and they'll just be so pumped up to be here and, and to do this program. So hope you'll come and join them. And now Jonas is going to do a very uh, Pentecost appropriate hymn uh, postlude called Come Holy Spirit, Our Hearts Inspire. 